Hey guys, um, my name is Jason. Like most of you, I am an aspiring backyard barbecue pit boss. Um, and, and I also like most of you, I do have some issues with my smoker. The main one being temperature maintenance. So what I have here is the Lava Lock 4 Probe Automatic Barbecue Smoker Temperature Controller here. Um, I'm hoping that that will help me because I don't know about you, but on my um, Oklahoma Joe um, Longhorn 3-in-1 Combo Unit, it can be exhausting temperature maintenance. Um, I think it's mainly due to the fact that the cooking chamber is only so large, so you can only move the mate meat so far away from the firebox. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have a video, I'm going to unbox it, set it up, do a test run, and I am actually going to cook this corn beef, corn beef brisket. Uh, before any of you start getting on me, you can't do that. Relax, I know this is not my typical brisket but this is something I had on hand and I don't want to waste a fire from that test run so okay so let's go ahead and unbox this first on top is the directions good we have a nice burlap sack to store everything in whenever you're not using it And Island Outdoors business card. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to be getting a lot from these guys here. This is the second thing I've gotten from them. And they are, they are the one-stop shop for anything for your smoker, for modifying your smoker. The first thing here is the control unit, the main control unit. The nice display there. Just one control knob. Power button and place to put, plug in the probes. Here's the actual fan unit. It will plug into the control unit. And this is what will provide the air through that bottom adjuster door. One of the two places where you normally adjust the airflow for your, for your um, temperature maintenance. the adapter this is where it attaches to that door um, this goes through a plate for an adapter that's in this box also that will be put put in that hole for the airflow and then the fan will go in like that This here, I believe, is the power cord. It's the power cord, the power supply for this. And what else is in here? We have the probes. There are three meat probes. One, two, I believe this is, oh, this is the third meat pro. This here is the air pro, which I'll actually open this one up. There's for the ambient temperature inside the cooking chamber. That's probably the most important one as far as I'm concerned. And this mounting put mounting piece to mount it on your rack. Let's put that through there. Mount it on your rack near where your meat will be to get the best temperature because I'm sure we've all learned that those built-in thermometers are not the most accurate. And here we have 
the adapter plates. This one, I believe, is for the Weber Smoky Mountain. And these are two, I believe I'm going to be using this one here for my um, Oklahoma Joe. And here's another one for other smokers. Just going to pick the one that best fits your smoker as far as the size of your air, air intake hole. And you're going to mount it in there and um, get it set up. So let me lay all of this out. I'm going to take a picture of everything here. All right, so here's everything. Again, the directions, the storage bag, which I honestly really like. Control unit, the adapter that attaches directly to your smoker. The fan unit, the power cord, all the probes here, including the ambient air probe, and the adapter that connects directly to your smoker that this unit will screw into. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go get everything set up and let you see what that looks like. All right, now I have everything set up. Here you see the fan unit. In the adapter you see what I'm talking about that plate you just slide it in, you slide it in there get it wedged between the door and the and the damper let me open this up and right there's where the air comes out pretty much the equivalent of sticking your face down there and blowing on the fire there's the core it connects to the central unit and everything is labeled there. So that goes into the fan output. You see the power in, that's the power cord. Just have it connected to a extension cord. And there is the ambient thermometer probe. Get a fly out of there. Ambient thermometer probe. And again, every place for the probes is labeled. You gotta make sure that one's plugged into the pit and I have one thermometer ready for that brisket I'm getting ready to put on. So with this, I already have my temperature set. I'm gonna turn it on. It'll make a loud beep when I first turn it on. I already have the temperature set. I usually cook at 250 and then the 205 for the um, target temperature for the meat. Now to change the temperatures, you just push down and hold. And you see there how the how the digits change. You get to the digit you want to change. You can put go up or down. And just keep going. And we once you have everything where you want it to be, just push it down again and hold it. And you are good. All right, so now I'll show you how everything is set up. Now I'm gonna go get my meat ready, get this fire started, and we're going to see how this works for me. All right, guys, I just wanted to show you, um, I have my fire started, my meat's not quite on yet. Uh, I'm waiting for it to get up to 250, see if the fan turns off. Don't know if you can hear the fan right now, it is running. But it did throttle down at about 15 degrees before my target temperature. So I'm kind of hoping that we can catch it now. Um, probably turning off at 250. So hopefully it'll be a couple seconds here. But watch it take like a minute. <laughs> that would be my luck. But while we're doing this, a few things that I want to let you know that I am going to do, depending on the success of this experiment, you see my main unit here, mount. it's just sitting on a table. Eventually what I'm going to do is mount it there with some Velcro, and then you see my probes going great. Just to stop there, it hit 250, and the fan stopped. 
So you see my probes going through under the door there. Um, the same company that sells this controller does sell grommets. You can put holes in the side of the smoking, inside of the cook chamber, and put them in there as opposed to having going under your door and number one, damaging the cord. I'm only gonna do this once, maybe twice. Plus look, with that, with it going under the door, you're losing smoke. So I'm gonna put on my brisket. I laid some raw, uncured, untreated bacon, for lack of a better term, it's just sliced pork belly on top of it for moisture since my brisket will be very lean since it was prepped for corned beef. So I'm gonna put that on. And we're going to check back in an hour, make sure that the temperature is still good. All right, guys, we're a little under an hour from whenever I got my meat on. See the pit's holding strong at 251 right now. Um, did have a few issues, but honestly, I think those issues are my fault. There you can see as soon as it drops below the target temp of 250, the fan kicks on. And as soon as it hits above 150, it'll, it'll go off. Um, so the issues I was talking about, um, I have had to add some wood to the fire a couple times. Obviously you're still going to have to add fuel. Um, but I think that the main issue is my starter fire was probably a little too small. Again, like I said, I, I am somewhat of a beginner on this. Still have to find my ways to go, but there's the lump charcoal I use. And also the wood that I was using in the beginning, it was um, actually some leftover um, mesquite chunks I got from the local Walmart. And honestly, it was just the junk that was left in the bottom of the bag. There's that. But now I have switched to my preferred apple chunks, which are much bigger and much better in my opinion. But again, everybody has the wood they like to use. Um, so, um, but I'll tell you what, having a couple times of just adding wood to the fire over the, over an hour as, a, as opposed to, um, as opposed to being constantly up messing with the uh, air adjustments on the smoker, um, that's awesome to me. So we're going to see how it goes. I'll check in in another hour. All right, we're three hours in. It's at 249, but the there you go, it's up to 251, and the fan kicked off. Um, see the internal temperature on the meat is 145. I'm hoping to be done in another couple hours. I'm going to open the lid, even though I don't like to, but just to let you know how the meat's coming along. Like they say, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. So let's see what's going on here. And there it is, the brisket with the um, bacon on top of it, just for some extra moisture there, since it is a very lean brisket. Um, actually, that stripe there is where I peeled off a piece of bacon, and, and I'm in the process of eating it actually right now. So everything's going good. Probably heard the fan kick on into high gear because with the lid open, the temperature did drop quite a bit. But it will be back up in no time. And what I am going to try to do is complete this cook 100% on the smoker. What I had done in the past is um, after four hours or five hours, I was so exhausted with maintaining my fire and everything that, um, that I would take it off and finish it in the oven. So this is going to be actually, if all goes well, this will be the first cook I've ever finished 100% in my smoker. So see you in another hour. All right, guys, I think this is going to be my last check-in until the end of the cook. Uh, you can see it's at 249 right now with the fan on and the chamber temperature climbing. There you go. It's at 251 and the fan just kicked off. I'm running decently clean smoke. Can't even really see it, but trust me, it is there. Um, I did have to add half a chimney of charcoal to the chamber only because I was pretty much down to ashes uh, about, I want to say 20 minutes, half hour ago. Um, but that is normal. 
Um, this unit, as of right now, is doing everything that it's supposed to do. It pretty much kills the need to mess around with the dampers. The fan takes care of the damper at the firebox. And I've been going with the damper at the chimney wide open all day. And it's been going pretty good. The only spikes I get is whenever I do add the fuel. Um, before I got this unit, with my goal being 250 to 275, I was running anywhere from 225 to 350. Um, today, I've run no lower than 240 and no higher than 270. So that is a lot better. Um, I will be back uh, at the end of the cook and then finally give my complete opinion on this. See you guys in a bit. Alright, so just about done here. I was kind of hoping that I'd catch it going to 205 because whenever it reaches whatever the internal temperature of that probe, it should have an alarm going off. But I'm just going to go ahead and pull it now. going to go in and going to finish this up and let you know what I think of, the, um, of this controller. Alright guys, I'm back with my final thoughts on the Lava Lock 4 Pro temperature controller. Um, it's everything I thought it was going to be. Um, instead of constantly messing with my dampers, both at the firebox and at the chimney, uh, the temperature controller takes care of the firebox. I left the chimney wide open through the whole cook. Um, through a six hour cook, I actually ended up using less wood than I usually do in four hours. Um, and this is the first cook I've ever actually done where I finished it on my smoker. Um, normally I get so tired after four hours that I end up pulling it out of the smoker and finishing it in the oven. Um, so I was really happy about that. Um, so I am definitely going to be sending a lot of business um, their way. And by the way, one thing that I forgot to mention is this is not a sponsor video. Lava Lock or Island Outdoors does not sponsor me. Um, this is just a video I felt like doing because honestly, I've watched a lot of review videos and they look like fun to do. So I decided to do one. So um, if you want to check them out, um, their website is bbqsmokermods.com and also they have a an Amazon store that is Island Outdoors. So check them out on Amazon or their website. Um, and besides the temperature controllers, there are a lot of other mods. I'm looking to probably purchase a few more. Um, definitely, definitely the rubber rings that you can put, put into the wall of the smoker to put the probes through. Um, so that way you're not putting it in underneath the door. Um, that, that makes for a better seal. And then um, I'm probably going to get a, um, a firebox basket, which, <laughs> which pretty much looks like a metal milk crate that fits in the firebox, makes it easier to clean up and uh, manage with the um, charcoal. So, um, yeah, definitely this, this is going to be a lifesaver for me as far as making it easier, um, less tiring. All I got to do is just occasionally add some fuel to the fire. Um, this isn't something that you'll be able to walk away and then come back eight hours later and be done, but it will make it to where you don't have to constantly be there and constantly adjusting um, the dampers depending on how hot your temperature is because this takes care of the temperature all you have to do is make sure there's enough fuel um, so um, again thanks a lot guys this is my first video hopefully of many um, if you liked it um, push like maybe subscribe I'm hoping to do more of these videos in the future so um, thanks a lot I appreciate your time